Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Well, hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Hopefully you're getting to spend some good time in the woods and on the water. We've been doing a lot of that lately. In fact, we've had a camera and quite a few tree stands over the last several weeks. We're gonna squeeze in a few more hunts and bring you a bow hunting update on next week's program. This week, we're gonna kick things off by doing some upland hunting on Beaver Island. You won't wanna miss that. We're also gonna spend a little bit of time on Hardy Pond. I was there last week to do a little walleye fishing to get to see what that adventure looked like. Lots of stuff on this week's show. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan. Out of doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by, by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime Bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. Well, uh, we're on Beaver Island here, and uh, there's a, it's called the Beaver Island Archipelago. There's, I don't know, seven or eight surrounding islands, uh, and Beaver Island, Garden Island, and High Island have, have both have uh, rough grouse on them that were released by the DNR back in the, uh, probably the 60s, I believe it was. Um, and it's pretty untraditional habitat that, that they survive in because there's, there's no forest management that goes on there, so it's kind of just old big woods with some overgrown apple orchards and things like that. And our goal is to come up here and hunt Beaver Island, Garden Island, and High Island, and hopefully uh, kill rough grouse on, on each and every of the, of the islands. So that's kind of what, uh, what the plan is. We landed about an hour ago, and uh, here with a buddy of mine, Brent Pike, some of his buddies and relatives. And uh, we're trying to get in a little, I don't know, hour or so hunt here before it gets dark. But, uh, We've barely been walking. We flushed six birds right next to where we parked the trucks. So we're trying to follow some of them up. But uh, I've heard stories about Beaver Island grouse, so I'm excited to see what we got over here. We're going to be mostly hunting the outer islands tomorrow. Um, we're here on the main island tonight. Um, beautiful place. If you've never been out here, you got to come. We'll see if there's any birds. Well, I know there's birds. We'll see if we can shoot. So stay tuned. 
Beaver Island Grouse. Beaver Island Grouse. Do I see this is a male or a female? So this is Todd's bird right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the tail feathers here. When you see two feathers or two, two dots in the feather here, that indicates a male. One would indicate a female. Sweet. Congratulations. Thank you. Go. Get it? Jimmy got it. Good evening to start the, the big weekend hunt. So, Jimmy got his first one here. Nice big, uh, oh, it looks like a red face maybe. Is that a red face? That's a nice bird. That's a real nice bird. Look at that. I'll feel the crop on that one too. <laughs> it's like a racquetball. Oh, they are full. Well, this yeah. one was kind of nice. It flushed up in front of the trail a little bit. And then the dog came in and kind of pointed it. Well, it pointed it down here and then it must have run, flushed, repointed it. Yeah. Up it went. Nice Beautiful shot. Bird. Nice Thank shot. you. Beautiful bird. He was just getting behind yeah, the pine that's tree. A, that's a young, that's a young of the year bird. Yeah. Well, to get a few birds that first night was pretty special indeed. Brent's family has been coming here for generations, so we were happy to tag along on this hunt with basically a local. Plus, it was fun to see this new pike line of upland gear that he and his buddies have started. Their little cabin on the island is a perfect spot for grouse camp, and as day two started, we were going to try and make it to some of the outer islands. The plan, we're packing up the trucks right now, loading dogs, we're going to head into town to the marina, uh, get on a boat, and we're going to try to head to High Island, which is one of the islands that surrounds Beaver Island. Um, we're either going to go to High or Garden, but we're trying to get to High Island, and uh, we'll have those guys tell you a little bit of the history of some of these islands around here. It's really kind of cool, but um, we're going to get into a big boat, get across the big water, and then we're going to get into a little boat and go ashore. So uh, they say there's quite a few grouse over there. I'm really excited to see. We got into a few last night. Um, it's a beautiful morning. It's high 30s right now. Forecast is for some rain later today, so we're hoping to get in a good couple, two to four hours of hunting maybe. Hopefully we'll see. But uh, it's exciting. Well, to say the ride across the big water was a little dicey would be putting it lightly. There was no way to make it to High Island with the wind where it was, so Garden Island was our destination for the day's hunt. Talk about adventure grouse hunting. I hope there's some grouse on this island. We came across, I don't know how much we could get on camera, but solid four to six footers, couple eight footers in there. That boat was perfect for what we were doing. Uh, we're shuttling everybody back and forth right now. We couldn't make it to High Island because the storm that was coming in and the waves were just too big, so we're on Garden Island. I don't know where on Garden Island, but we are here. Actually, they know where we're at because there's a little DNR cabin here, I guess. So um, we're gonna get everything situated. I think we're gonna be here for pretty much the better part of the day. Um, just look at this island is about roughly three miles long and about a mile or so wide. Um, I said we're gonna hunt kind of the edges of it. So pretty exciting. Um, yeah, that was awesome. When you come over to Garden Island, the uh, Boy Scout troop has been nice enough to put up these signs and there's a map. And then um, some of the locals on Beaver Island come over here and they keep these signs pretty up to date with what trails are cleared so you can hike around the island and whatnot. Um, post offices that way, DNR cabins, you can head to Pete Manitou's Bay going this way, Sturgeon Bay, Jensen's, uh, North Cut, where a lot of people anchors right down this trail this way. So. It's kind of nice to be over here and have trails that are cleared and you can, you, I don't know, it's state owned so everyone can use them. So Garden Island has had residents for a long time, Native Americans, and then in the mid 1800s, people started moving over there, farmers. There was a, um, a kind of a Great Lakes renowned boat builder who built boats for both the UP and the Beaver Island chain. who lived on the east side of the island and the west side of the island, there was a blind net mender who lived over on that side of the island and people would bring nets from all over the UP and the Great Lakes just to have them mend their nets. Um, there's a schoolhouse, there was a post office, there was roads, and you know much of that is all gone. There's nothing left but a lot of foundations of those houses. So I think the last resident left Garden Island in 1947 and his name was Pete Manitou, and he was a Native American farmer who lives uh, on the southeast corner of Garden. But there is a thriving grouse population, we'll see 50 birds in an outing and uh, it's thick cover. It's not traditional grouse cover for sure, but it's kind of fun hunting. There's some old orchards and, and whatnot and it's very mixed diverse terrain over on Garden Island for sure. Yeah, the terrain was pretty thick with little openings spread throughout, which of course made it really hard to get the grouse on camera. 
But once we did connect on a bird, well, that made it much easier to see. I actually tried to hit it with my gun, and then <laughs> he scared it to self protection. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turned around and was able to get a nice shot on him. Nice young of the year bird. Come on up here, because I thought it was up here. Okay. No. Three. Never saw it. I mean, I saw it two feet up, and then I lost it. That was a nice point. Oh, there it went. Okay. <laughs> wow, he was up there. <laughs> How high was that bird? <laughs> it was up there. Well, one flew across. <laughs> but he had to be about... 75 yards up. I wondered what you were shooting at. I but it didn't stop up. me from shooting at him. <laughs> well, this bird was high enough that I could not catch up with him. But whether it was the same bird or a different one, I was able to connect on a good shot a little bit later and even a better retrieve. Look at that tail. <laughs> wow. That's a nice bird. She, uh, she gutted it for you, I think. Too. Yeah, the breast is still all right. Yeah. Look at that. Oh my. Yesterday was my very first beaver island grouse, and today's my first garden island grouse. This one is a monster. Grouse hunting trips are always a lot of fun, and one of the harder things we try to tape each year. But to do it on some islands in the middle of Lake Michigan, well, that makes it pretty special. We hit the local hot spots while here. No trip to the island is complete without a trip to the Shamrock and also the Beaver Island Lodge. The folks on the island are the best, and our last day was soon approaching. I've been a bird dog guy for 20 years, and you know, as a kid, we, you know, we'd hunt grouse a little bit, mostly when we were out rabbit hunting and squirrel hunting. And you know, if you get a grouse, I mean, that was like massive bonus. And you know, I really got into dogs about 20 years ago, and and just really started getting in. I mean, that's what we have in Michigan. You know, I mean, there's there's some pheasants to be shot and stuff like that, but you know, really grouse and woodcock are, are where it's at in Michigan. You know, we do some trips out west, you know, for pheasants and quail and sharp tails and huns and things like that. But you know, living in Michigan, you know, I mean, no matter where you live, within two three hours, you can pretty much get into some some pretty decent grouse hunting. And that's just you know what I spend you know half of September, all of October, half of November doing is. You know, kind of trying to chase chase birds around the entire state, and you know, wherever I can find good bird numbers is is where I typically end up stationing myself for a few weeks. Good. Nice bird. You like shooting them big granddaddies. Look at the look at the head in that thing. That's a beautiful oh, bird. Yeah, isn't that cool color? Oh man. Of course, they flush just basically just out of range. You got lucky and connected, but beautiful bird. Well, Beaver Island grouse. Beaver Island grouse. Not much better than that. Nice bird. Jimmy's is definitely bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about size, Brent. Well, okay. <laughs> Bird hunting is simply the best. And with the rain, we had plenty of downtime to tell some stories and hear some lies. For me, whether it's deer camp, trout camp, or grouse camp, spending time with the guys around a warm fire is one of the best parts of the hunt. So whether it's an island getaway or the stand of popple down the road, get out and enjoy all the upland woods have to offer here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, when you get to the end of October and the first part of November, a lot of us start switching into deer mode. But I tell you what, there's a lot of good fishing that can be had if you're willing to get out of the tree stand and hit the water. Well, where are we at this morning, young fella? Hardy Pond, Nuego, Michigan. It's uh, what, October 28th. It's a beautiful day. Temperature on the truck said 29 this morning, Whew. which is perfect walleye weather for the fall. Okay. If you're, if you're a deer hunter, I'm sure you're enjoying the woods, but this is my cup of tea, so that's what <laughs> we're going to do. And how are we going to be chasing them today? Um, we're going to do two different technique, 
techniques actually. We're going to be jigging um, glide baits and then we're also going to be lindy rigging live creek chubs oh. um, off the back. So two different techniques. Okay. How often do you get out here? <laughs> as much as possible. Usually I fish hardy about three days a week. Wow. Starting in like the beginning of October. Okay. Oh, oh boy, that's bass. a dandy smallmouth. The skunk is out. <laughs> yeah. He's got to be 18, maybe. Yeah, yeah that's a nice fish. Yep. Not what we're looking for, but yep, fun right, to catch. Right in the, nice right in the goodie box. Heck yeah. All right. Well, All right. We're good on the start. Board. There we you go. You got it. <laughs> So this here is our glide bait presentation. This particular one is a number seven golden black jig and rapala. And it's rapala, not rapala. Jig and rapala. And what we do with this is there's two different ways you can do it. You can either jig it directly below the boat vertical or you can cast it out and cover more water. When you cast it out, you want to cast it out. Watch your line where it meets the water. When that line is coming at you, that means it's sinking. As soon as it stops, that's when you want to start jerking it. Right here, right? Work it back to the boat, and most of the fish come like three quarters of the way back or or directly under the boat. Okay. So. Do you ever use a blade bait and do the same thing? We do, yeah. Okay. I actually make my own blade bait, so it's a little nicer on the budget. You know, these are about $7 lures, and probably today you'll get to see, I got this little tool, it's called the Hound Dog Lure Retriever, hmm. to get them out of the snags. So I'm sure you guys will get to see that, because if you don't have one of them, you're going to lose a lot of baits. Nice. There we go. Pops on. That was on the jigging ramp, right? Yeah, that's on a, uh, actually it's, you can call it that, but it's actually a, a uh, different. Different brand? Yeah. Oh. But, yeah. Shiver minnow? Shiver minnow, yeah. It's a nice fish. Perfect. Yeah. Nice, nice job. Thank you. What do we got here? So this is a hardy dam. It's the best lure on Hardy Dam, actually. It's the Hound Dog Lure Retriever. <laughs> and what's really cool about this, it's like $15, okay? And you put it on a paracord. This is like a 100-pound test paracord. And I just found an old rod, cut it up, an old line counter reel or level wind reel. You take this little unit here, and you're snagged up. You put your line on here. And then you want to hold your rod tight, the line. It's a little easier with two people but so you keep your line tight and then you're just gonna run that hound dog right down to the the lure and what it'll do is it'll hit that lure and knock it out of the snag it works about 90% of the time so now it's on the lure you're just gonna kind of thunk it pick it up and just keep knocking it out till it comes off Hold it a little tighter, Fred. All right, now drop it with me. There it goes. Got her. Got the lure? I think we got the snag, too, coming up. <laughs> so you might have four lures. Yeah. <laughs> might have made us money on the first go round. That's heavy, whatever it is. Well, I have to say this little thing got out five out of six snags today, which is pretty good when the lures can run six or seven dollars a piece. Today was a hard day of fishing. The few days prior to us arriving were nice hot days and it seemed to affect the fishing on this cold, foggy morning. But you played the hand you're dealt and the guys just kept fishing. We moved several times today and focused on where Brian had been catching fish on the drop-offs. We altered our colors, tried a few different lures, but at the end of the day, the fish were here. We could see them. We just couldn't get them to bite. We ended the day with a nice pike, but no more walleye. So just so you believe me that this is a good walleye spot, here's the trip we took with Brian in the same spot two years back. Well, we hooked up again just last week to try our luck at Hardy Pond. This is another giant piece of water that does hold some very nice fish. Well, today we're up on Hardy Dam, and in the fall, these fish really hang on these really sharp breaks. So we're gonna hit a number of different spots today, focusing on like steep, steep breaks next to shallow water, adjacent to deep water. Uh, these fall fish are putting a feed bag on for the winter. We got uh, a couple of different techniques. We're using uh, Johnny darters, which are a glide bait, 
We're gonna be casting those off the front of the boat. And then we're Lindy rigging uh, live creek chubs and uh, sucker minnows off the back. So what you have here is a super simple rig. You have just basically a one-aught, um, this is a uh, Berkeley Fusion one-aught hook, and then a live creek chub. I like them about, this is about a perfect size creek chub. It's probably, I don't know, four and a half, five inches long. And then you have an 18 inch leader. You do not want a long leader, um, up to a, just a walking sinker, a one ounce walking sinker. Okay. And then that bead's just protecting your uh, knot there from your swivel. So super simple rig. And then you drop it down to the bottom and then you just pull it up off bottom and drop it back. But the ticket to this rig is to not set the hook. You want to, when you feel a bite, instantly let the line go and you feed that fish. And it's a guessing game, but I usually feed it about 10 to 15 seconds. Wait till I feel that fish and I just start reeling. I don't even set the hook on the fish. So it's kind of a technique to, to hooking them, actually. On both of these trips, Brian's son, Blake, who is seven, mind you, just about outfished everyone on the boat. This kid could catch fish out of a puddle. We had steady action most of the morning. Nice fish. It is. As we move from spot to spot, I asked Brian how he ever got the fishing bug and what that has turned into the last several years. I really caught the bug. My grandpa would always take me since I was about four years old, so a little younger than Blake. And uh, he really got me hooked on it. And we'd go up to the UP to Lake Independence and it was always walleyes. And the challenge of the walleyes really kept me hooked. Well, then I started uh, fishing on my own and I got into the West Michigan Walleye Club, which I'm actually president of the West Michigan Walleye Club now. And I started tournament fishing and just learning a ton. And every tournament you would learn so much and it was just kind of an addiction. And uh, then I became a charter captain because I had all the stuff from uh, tournament fishing. And I just really enjoy sharing all the secrets with, with my clients and getting out there and getting people on the water to experience it. It's a lot of fun. We had a nice mixed bag going today with some very nice eater sized fish, but we also had one of the more <laughs> memorable netting jobs I can seem to remember. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa! That's a musky. That's a musky. Holy cow! What? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, it's a fiasco up here. Well, that broken net got a musky. Wow! Wow! Do you guys normally catch muskies in here? Very rare. All right. Nice job, boys. One other one out of here before, and it was about that same size. That was a record-setting net job there too. <laughs> <laughs> It was really interesting to me that Brian guides on several different bodies of water all across the state of Michigan. So I had him talk a little bit about where he is typically in a normal year of fishing. So I always start my season uh, the month of April on Detroit River uh, because most everything else is closed. So I start on Detroit River the wow. month of April. The month of May I move up to uh, St. Clair River. And then into June I'm on Lake Erie, usually out of uh, Sterling State Park. and then. July and August, I'm spending a lot of time in northern Michigan, like Lake Leelanau, Mullet Lake, Burt Lake. Those, those lakes up there are just perfect that time of year. And I do fish Muskegon Lake the month of July quite often as well. That's my home, home lake. I, I love to fish that lake. And then September, October, November, I'm on Hardy Dam, Muskegon Lake, Mullet Lake, Burt Lake. Um, and it's pretty much all jigging from uh, you know, October, November on. And then you get into late November into December, I'm really after the deep water walleyes on Muskegon Lake, doing a lot of trolling. It's close to home, and uh, you can really get out there and get after some uh, nice walleyes. We caught a couple of walleyes last year that were about 13 pounds off of Muskegon Lake, so. What a fun group of guys, and this time of year, well, it just goes too fast. Whether you're climbing into a bow stand or a duck blind or trying to find some walleye, good luck. What a grand old state we have. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks. It is that time of year. We've got all sorts of great things headed your way. We'll take you out on a Saginaw Bay duck hunt, out to Camp Grayling for a deer hunt with a bunch of veterans. And speaking of deer, in just a couple of short weeks, we have the firearm deer opener headed your way.
Well, that's right, Jenny. It is hard to believe that the firearm deer season is only a couple of weeks away. And if you're just strictly a gun hunter, you may not know this, but if you're a bow hunter, hopefully you do, that this year is the first year that it's mandatory to register your deer online within 72 hours of harvest. Now, you can do that through the DNR's website, or you can do it through their app. They're both fairly easy to use, and uh, but that is something that you're going to need to do, if you're, especially if you're going to take your deer to a processor. Uh, they're going to need your hunt confirmation number that is uh, sent to you once you register your deer. So that is good information for you to just to kind of be aware of this year. And if you have any questions about that, you can go to the DNR's website. They have it all kind of laid out right there for you. So get out and enjoy this time of the year. And hopefully if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By Jay Sporting Goods, with locations in Claire and Gaylord. Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jay's on the web at jaysportinggoods.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including the ultimate fishing show Detroit, January 12th through 15th at Novi Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features fishing tackle, trips, boats, and seminars from top pros. The ultimate fishing show, Novi, January 12th through 15th. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hand. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, east to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man.